Well, it's really good to see you for morning prayer on Wednesday, the 18th of January. I hope this finds you well. <clears throat> We're remembering Amy Carmichael today, the founder of the Donava Fellowship and spiritual writer from last century. And it's also the first day of the week of prayer for Christian unity, um, where, of course, we um, traditionally pray for uh, unity among all denominations um, and within denominations, of course, um, as well. So we'll be pleased to pray for that. Um, our psalm today is the second half of Psalm 147, and we have a, a longer chunk today of Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Um, much for us to pray about as well, um, not least today the diocesan um, buildings uh, um, uh, um, faculty uh, department, DAC, the Diocesan Advisory Committee meets today, uh, as indeed does the Finance com Committee. So we'll be pleased to pray for both of those, as well as all that's going on within our communities and our own lives too. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your light springs up for the righteous, and all the peoples have seen your glory. O oh, be joyful in the earth, all the Lord. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is gracious. His steadfast love is everlasting and his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. Psalm 147, verses 13 to the end. Sing praise to the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates and has blessed your children within you. He has established peace in your borders and satisfies you with the finest wheat. He sends forth his command to the earth and his word runs very swiftly. He gives snow like wool and scatters the hoarfrost like ashes. He casts down his hailstones like morsels of bread. Who can endure his frost? He sends forth his word and melts them. He blows with his wind and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and judgments to Israel. He has not dealt so with any other nation. They do not know his laws. Alleluia. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. <clears throat> Let's see what Paul has to say to the Corinthian church here in Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians 7, uh, verses 1 to 24. Now, concerning the matters about which you wrote, it is well for a man not to touch a woman. But because of cases of sexual immorality, each man should have his own wife and each woman her own husband. A husband should give to his wife her conjugal rights and likewise the wife to her husband. The wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. Likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. Do not deprive one another, except perhaps by agreement for a set time, to devote yourselves to prayer, and then come together again so that Satan may not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. This I say by way of concession, not of command. I wish that all were as I myself am. But each has a particular gift from God and having one kind and another a different kind. To the unmarried and widows, I say that it is well for them to remain unmarried as I am. But if they are not practicing self-control, they should marry. 
for it is better to marry than to be aflame with passion. To the married I give this command, not I, but the Lord, that the wife should not separate from her husband. And if she does separate, let her remain unmarried or else be reconciled to her husband, and that the husband should not divorce his wife. To the rest I say, I and not the Lord, <coughs> that if any believer has a wife who is an unbeliever, and she consents to live with him, he should not divorce her. And if any woman has a husband who is an unbeliever, and he consents to live with her, she should not divorce him. The unbelieving husband is made holy through his wife, and the unbelieving wife is made holy through her husband. Otherwise, your children would be unclean, but as it is, they are holy. For if the unbelieving partner separates, let it be so. In such a case, the brother or sister is not bound. It is to peace that God has called you. Wife, for all you know, you might save your husband. Husband, for all you know, you might save your wife. However that may be, let each of you lead the life that the Lord has assigned, to which God has called you. This is my rule in all the churches. Was anyone at the time of his call already circumcised? Let him not seek to remove the marks of circumcision. Was anyone at the time of his call uncircumcised? Let him not seek circumcision. Circumcision is nothing and uncircumcision is nothing, but obeying the commandments of God is everything. Let each of you remain in the condition to which, uh, in which you were called. Were you a slave when called? <laughs> oh dear. Uh, were you a slave when called? Do not be concerned about it. Even if you can gain your freedom, make use of your present condition now more than ever. For whoever was called in the Lord as a slave is a freed person belonging to the Lord. Just as whoever was free when called is a slave of Christ. You were bought with a price. Do not become slaves of human masters. In whatever condition you were called, brothers and sisters, there remain with God. Plenty of advice there from Paul for us to consider and reflect upon. While we continue to pray for the unity of the church, the peace of the world, the healing of the sick, revelation of Christ to those from whom his glory is hidden and all who travel. So let's turn to our prayers of intercession. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your word. The psalmist's praise of your name for Paul's writing to the Corinthian church, outlining advice upon relationships. Lord, we Remember that it's our calling from you that matters more than anything else. We do thank you that you place a unique calling on each one of us to serve you, whether that be within the context of marriage or singleness or our own relationships. Lord, we know that we experience your love in particular ways through our own relationships. You indeed, as Holy Trinity, are community. So are we as your church. And we pray that you would build us up as people, as individuals and as a community to your praise and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this week of prayer for Christian unity. So we do pray for the church, for the Church of England, firstly. Lord, we recognise the many challenges we face in so many different ways and the various opinions, not least of tradition, of belief, of doctrine, the matters of the day, particularly as we enter a new round in the debate of same-sex marriage. So we pray for, for that conversation to move onwards in love and we pray Lord that you would bind us together not just as a national even global church but locally too 
So we do pray for our relationships within our benefice between Staple Grove and Norton and with the other churches within our deanery too. Lord, we pray for our relationships and work with other denominations, whether that be Methodist, Baptist, Free Church, Catholic. And Lord, we thank you for the ministry of Mike Parsons here within our benefice. And Lord, we pray for the work done by the Mint Group Mission in North Taunton, for the multi-denominational Christian initiatives across the town of pastors in so many different ways and chaplains, other organisations like the Food Bank and Open Door. Lord, we thank you for the much, the great work done by so many people in your name to serve the community. We pray that that will continue. But Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, within the church, we pray today for the, the Diocesan Finance Committee. Facing the challenges as we do across the diocese within our churches challenges of increased costs and decreasing uh, income. So Lord, we do pray for your wisdom to lead that conversation today. And we pray for the DAC, the Diocesan Advisory Committee, as they meet to consider our buildings, not least, of course, uh, on the agenda, the work proposed at All Saints Norton. Thank you for the positive visit that took place last month and I do ask that your will be done. Oh Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we're asked to pray for all who travel, not least in the light of yesterday's uh, chaos here in Taunton and across the, uh, across the county. Lord, we do pray in particular for the those involved in the in the coach that uh, overturned uh, containing the employees of Hinkley Point. Lord, we thank you that nobody was killed, but we do know that uh, many people were injured, some of them seriously. So we pray for uh, for their recovery and for the safety of all who travel today, as well as those who seek to support them, whether that be through uh, breakdown services or emergency services or otherwise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the healing of the sick. We call to mind those individuals we know who are sick. Pray for Barbara and for Neville, as well as any others who are known to us, including Mary. We ask that you would be with them at this time. And we do pray for those who are mourning the loss of loved ones. I know from speaking to local funeral directors that there are many, many families at the moment who've lost a loved one. So we do continue to pray for those whose funerals have taken place recently, Jim Booth, Mary Finch, Val Farrow, and uh, Joyce Tutty, as well as those whose funerals we will soon be dealing with, Pam Carpenter and Hazel Roost. So Lord, we pray that you would give their friends and families the strength, the light and the comfort that they need at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So, Lord, we do pray for the day that lies ahead of us today, at least the meeting to plan the funeral for Pam Carpenter, asking that your will be done. We pray for 
our benefits office this morning at Norton Fitzwarren as we open and hopefully be a symbol of the presence of your son Jesus Christ shining in the world. And Lord, we pray that wherever we are, whatever we do, that your light will indeed lead us today and that we can build your kingdom wherever we are. So almighty God, in Christ you make all things new, transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace, and in the renewal of our lives make known your heavenly glory through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And believing the promises of God as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and for ever. Amen. And may Christ who sends us to the nations give us the power of his spirit. Amen. And let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, really good to have you with me, and um, I hope that you have a really good day. Um, don't forget morning prayer on Thursday mornings um, is at Staple Grove Church at nine o'clock. Um, and um, perhaps you can join us for service um, this coming Sunday, uh, eight o'clock and eleven o'clock at Staple Grove, 9.30 at Norton Fitzwarren. Take care. <laughs>